international organisation um, and this annual sitting is all the members of youth parliament gathering together to debate the issues that young people care about most. It's all about getting together the members of youth parliament from across the country. We represent young people's views from all across the UK. At the end of it we're going to create a manifesto that will then be launched to show other young people what we're working on and what we're fighting for them. getting young people's voices heard. Strengthen our campaign and put across um, young people's views. Develop skills and debate topics that affect young people. Hoping to like better ourselves as MIP so we can help people more in our regions. Young people count for a lot of the population and they often go unheard and I think it's important to have a body of young people like the UKYP to make sure that they do get listened to. There's a lot of getting to know each other and finding out about what campaigns they've got running in their own local authority areas. I'm from Wolverhampton. I'm from Warwickshire. Youth unemployment is a, a big problem, you know, I think we have something like 25% of young people that's between 18 and 21 unemployed. Our main issues are travel and um, young people's body image, so being too fat, being too thin. Youth unemployment is at an all-time high and it's particularly bad in Leeds. Um, also cuts to young people's services are making it harder for people to get skills. The government do and are trying, I think, to change and, and lower youth unemployment. I think every government has tried to do that over the years. But the, the great issue is, is the organisation at a local level. Basically young people did not, do not deserve to face the repercussions of mistakes that they were not part of. I want more young people to be in work and have the opportunities they deserve. The problem we've got now is that before you even open a prospectus, you're going to have £36,000 of debt hanging over your heads. Now, it's important that we communicate the facts, right? It's not as if uh, you pay it up front, you do pay it after. Um, and in fact, it's paid based on what you earn over 21K. I don't want to see a single person put off going to university if they want to go. That being said, it is patronising to suggest that young people will not be put off by the fact they have to take out a small mortgage just to fill in an application to go to uni. My name's Ben Howlett, I'm the National Chairman of Conservative Future. Uh, I represent the youth wing of the Conservative Party. There's stuff in terms of tuition fees which we're going out there trying to explain to people what it's all about. Because it is quite a complex system, but hopefully we'll be able to show it to be a lot more progressive than actually the previous system was. Um, in terms of the EMA changes, to dispel some of those myths and say, actually, change to EMA quite positive because they're actually going to be now supported and targeted at the people that can't afford to go to um, uh, uh, go and do their A levels or go into further education as a much more targeted approach um, and then we're doing everything in terms of looking at voting ages looking at how generally to get more younger people involved in politics because the participation rates are falling through the ground I think the sort of the loss of youth services uh, that that really worries me and I think we sort of started building up very, very strong networks of youth services that were starting to, you know, really starting to see things happen. And, you know, those are the sort of things that you can get rid of overnight, but you can't just recreate them. Yeah, there are some very difficult decisions to be made in terms of funding at the moment. The most important thing for young people is to get the economy back up and running again. The better the economy, the more jobs available for young people. And down the country, young people are having their youth workers, you know, being made redundant, or their youth councils, or their, their youth centres closed, and that's an exceptionally difficult thing for young people to try and comprehend. I think young people have had a pretty raw deal for too many years. I think we have so many negative images about uh, uh, young people, and they're too often an afterthought in government policy generally. So what we've started to do is to develop a new youth policy, it's going to be called Positive for Youth. Everything that I do around young people has got to be positive for young people and to get away from all the negative stereotype stuff we've had in the past. And it's not just in our department, in education. I've put together an action group consisting of nine ministers from nine different government departments who come together to talk about youth issues to make sure that in each area of government policy we're trying to see how it impacts on young people and how we can be positive for, for youth there uh, as well. Just completed a workshop on public speaking. It was all about how to do better public speaking, how to come across when you're talking to people. Here at 
the annual sitting, I'm teaching them all about how to write press releases, a little bit of article writing. We're getting involved in interviewing other members of youth parliament and key speakers as well. It's about everybody being involved in problem solving, everybody being involved in identifying what the issues are that need that, that need addressing and improving their communities. It's really good co to connect with all the obviously really engaged um, young people of the youth, UK Youth Parliament who are here um, because there's obviously quite a lot of overlap with what we're trying to do in, in schools and hope just to kind of raise the awareness of what we're up to. And we work a lot with local government um, uh, authorities so we think it would be, you know, it's quite an important uh, thing for us to be here. Well, the thing that we get asked to tackle mainly is uh, crime and antisocial behaviour. And what we like to do is work with young people um, and ask them to look for solutions to those problems. The people are here and they're really energised and they know what they want and they're really focused. So I think it's just great to be able to meet them, to tell them about the project. People don't listen to young people in the media and that's why we've created the sex positive campaign to try and change that and change society. John Burko is an inspiration in terms of what the work that he does and like getting, helping youth parliament and supporting youth parliament and the role it does. You are the future of our country and the future of our democracy. That's why the UK Youth Parliament matters so much. What better way to show one's commitment than for me each year to go to the UK Youth Parliament annual sitting and to host you coming to us at Parliament with me chairing the debates. To me, it's the single most interesting thing outside the chair of the House of Commons that I do each year. Chairing the UK Youth Parliament is easier because on the whole you can always be relied upon to behave well. That isn't always the case in the House of Commons. UKYP is a fantastic forum for young people to come and have a voice, have a national voice, talk about really important issues for um, young people. I want the Youth Parliament to be bold, to be vociferous, there's usually no problem of, uh, of that, and to be creative and come up with new imaginative ways of how we can do things better for young people. I've been, always been really keen to promote UKYP wherever I can, why I've come for the last few years to these sittings and why I really welcome having UKYP in the House of Commons as we do every autumn as well. I completely agree with any type of participation among young people um, as something that's absolutely so national. Uh, I think it's absolutely great work. So we had a really wide range of debate, not just about things that affect young people actually, but people's concerns for their families, for their friends and for older generations. As a youth parliament you've been very successful at raising the profile of young people. The way that you organise is very, very positive um, and it's, it's also very democratic. Um, you know, the way that you hold your elections, the way that you get younger people in schools to participate and also I don't think people realise that you go right down to age 11 um, and also, I mean, you've had two annual sittings in the Chamber and Parliament. You've got your third one coming up as well. If you look at the diversity of people, and I'm not just talking about colour, but also kind of in terms of disability and age and background, you know, you are far more diverse than we are as a Parliament. More and more young people are engaged in, in politics uh, these days, and I think we should uh, recognise that. Always stick by the values that made you get into politics. Never forget what it was that got you started in it. It's so easy to start making too many compromises. And whenever someone's ignoring you, just shout a bit louder. Have we all had a good weekend? <laughs> have we all looking forward to the House of Commons?
Well, we have evening entertainment. We had a variety show last night, which was really fun to watch. Loads of people got involved, so it was good to kind of see other people's talents as well as politics and with youth parliament. The profit of our time is profit. Tonight we've got a disco so we can all let our hair down a bit and have some fun.